I always had kind of a vision or dream for myself. You know, there's something, something big in store for my life. I just didn't know how I would get there. During my childhood, my grandfather would tell me stories about my cousin Charles. He's one of the last few remaining Tuskegee Airmen. The story is pretty well known that they were not taken very favorably. They did not think the Tuskegee Airmen project was going to work and that there was no way that, you know, African Americans would be good pilots. Well, he was a member of, you know, some of the best pilots that the Air Corps has ever seen. And so I just found it very interesting. I didn't realize there was like an underlying theme of aviation in my family. Thinking about myself being a pilot at that age? No. 17-year-old version of me was very anxious. A lot of the instability came from my mother and I relocating a lot, constantly moving from one apartment to another, and going from one school to another. And my father was not in the picture. I think I just had kind of grown tired of the instability. And I just kind of had this gut-wrenching feeling like, like, this is wrong. You were going down the wrong path in life. There was this deep sense that, like, I needed to make a change. Joining at 18, I didn't know much about the Navy. I was scared, I was nervous, I had no idea what I was really doing. You know, I really didn't know what I was getting into. When I enlisted, the Navy recruiter offered this job as an aircraft electrician. And I was like, hey, maybe this will work out for me. I remember checking into my first squadron as an electrician, and I walked into the hangar bay, and I just, I just remember kind of like the smell of like the jet fuel and the oil and the grease. I knew I was where I was supposed to be. But the aviation was just kind of like this lingering thought. I never really thought of it as a career path for me. You know, you think about statistically, your background, your struggles, like people like you don't make it that far. You don't make it to be pilots. That was like when the reality really hit me. I started to look at the Navy as a way to catapult my life into something more. I saw an opportunity and I was like, there's the next big step for Eric McGee. Flight school, you go through many phases, and uh, I really dove into it. It's designed to be very fast-paced and arduous and to get you in, get you through, and you have to learn a lot in a very short amount of time. I immersed myself into it, I studied it, and it became my craft. Stay diligent, try and try again, making a decision, chipping away one step after the next after the next really just got to commit to that idea. That's how you make things happen for yourself. Fast forward a few years, here I am today flying MH-60 Romeos for a living. We are an expeditionary squadron by, by nature. Our mission is primarily like anti-submarine warfare. We do a lot of intelligence gathering, reconnaissance, search and rescue. I mean, anything a helicopter can do, uh, and, and then a lot more. Having served for 17 years now, it's, I've gone through stages uh, where the initial time in my service was more about me. Once I kind of established that for myself and goal setting, um, then I transitioned more into like, a, okay, how do I, how do I be a good leader? How do I set a good example for other people to follow? Because I think all of us should have desires and goals that lead us in, in our growth, in our relationships. What you do is not only for yourself, 
and it's for your family. But your family is for the community. The community should be for our country. I just say life's a blessing. <laughs> you don't like it, yeah, that's what I meant. Don't let circumstances be your excuse for not achieving. My name is Eric McGee, and I'm a pilot in the United States Navy.